So I recently purchased this Greenlee DM210A uh, multimeter. I got it off of eBay and I got it for 40 bucks. And it was listed as being sold for parts or not working. So I messaged the guy because that's a really good price for this meter if it's in working condition. And I asked, are there any issues with the meter? You know, if he could just tell me a little bit more about what he thinks might be wrong with it. Why is it being sold for parts or whatever? So he answered me back and said that there's no issues. Well, I purchased it and I got it in a few days ago. And I'm not sure if his definition of no issues means that the meter turns on. But this meter definitely has an issue. But I'm not really complaining because I did buy it. Still not totally trust. Still not totally trusting that it was a pristine condition meter. But you can see here that it pretty much is ignoring the input jacks. Put it on DC. Kind of floats on DC. You can see the minus sign flashing a little bit. And continuity is the real dead giveaway because I mean we get nothing out of this. And I have swapped jacks from the Bryman. Just try it out so it's not a jack problem. So we'll tear into this meter and as we go into it I'll tell you a little bit more about why I bought this meter and what I'm planning on doing with it. And hopefully we'll get a repair out of it. I'm thinking that since it it, it does seem like it is a kind of very large issue that you know it's completely ignoring the jacks that that'll actually narrow down the problem I'm hoping it'll be an easy find easy fix and that this meter will be good again so let's go ahead and break it apart so I'm sure that we all noticed that other than color this thing looks exactly like the Bryman 235 um, it is actually a rebadged Bryman um, it is not the 235. I think that the Greenlee's 510A is a clone of the, well actually I say clone, is a rebadge of the 235. And I really would have liked to have gotten that. But a lot of the features on the 235 don't really, uh, aren't really necessary for what I intend to do with this meter. This meter is actually going to go into my tool bag as an everyday carry. Um, I really just I like the 235 a whole lot but I don't want that particular one to be in my tool bag because it tends to get tossed around and beat up and really just I've never had luck keeping meters for very long in that tool bag. I'm hoping that this meter will be different um, right now seeing as how it's not working at all that's kind of up in the air but let's go ahead and I mean you can see it was really quick to take this meter apart let's go ahead and kind of give it a good visual look over in fact I think that I'm gonna look over it with a magnifying glass and see if we can just spot any issues I do kind of get a little bit of a burnt smell coming out of the meter so we're really going to look for the components that may be burnt. Now, there's nothing obvious sticking out right here. No smoke or anything like that. But we want to kind of, we're going to kind of start with this board. We may have to remove it. Um, it is soldered in on the Brymans, these two wires. But what's kind of nice about it is that since it is, since it does seem to be a input jack problem and that's not guaranteed this board here this secondary board is the input jack module so we know that we can kind of concentrate on this if we don't see anything on the back side we'll unscrew it desolder it pull it off and we'll check the front side and then if there's no obvious problems there then we may be looking at a bad computer but I'm feeling kind of lucky also, um, it is missing the milliamps fuse, which for me, 
that kind of gives me a sign that this meter was overloaded at one point. I mean, why else remove the fuse? Uh, we will also check this fuse. This, I don't think, of course, I never did take the Bryman apart to really look. But I don't think that this is the stock fuse. Alright, so I think I may have spotted the problem. I'm going to zoom y'all in so that y you can kind of see what I'm seeing a little bit better. Okay, so I've got the macro on the camera, and I apologize if it's kind of shaky. I am, uh, I don't have a setup to get close to my bench yet. I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do as far as that. But you can see right there, there's kind of a, a large solder pad, and then you can see the isolation slot. And then a little bit to the left of that, you can see just a small section of solder. And it looks like there's supposed to be a trace there and there's clearly not one. So that may be the entire issue. Let's, uh, let's get this sorted up and we'll actually test it out and see. I also did notice uh, looking back at the back of the meter. There's a pretty good burnt spot right here. Okay, so here we can see the completed repair. I just used some of that Teflon insulated wire. I stripped back a little bit of it and bent a little 90 degree angle onto it. And then I soldered the little four point pad, which is actually the input jack to it. And then to the pad that goes to the other side of the board, as well as tinning the entire wire. Um, now, as far as this repair goes, I actually feel better about the repair than I do about the way that it came from the factory. Um, that trace may have been tinned beforehand. I kind of feel like it wasn't intentional even if it was, although I can see that all these traces are tinned. And I really think that this is actually going to be more robust than it was the day it was made. So let's get it put back together and see if it works. All right, so we've got the meter put back together. Let's see if the repair was successful or not. Still turns on, that's a good sign. Let's go straight to continuity mode. We've got continuity. Let's, uh, let's try a little DC voltage. This should be a fixed five volt. Very good. Let's go ahead and try it against the Bryman. Now it did actually turn out that both fuses were blown and the fuse that was in the Greenlee is not identical to the Bryman, which I know the Bryman is a stock because I bought that brand new. So that kind of leads me to believe that they grossly overloaded this meter somehow. And that's what blew that trace out. Can you see that? I would say that's pretty accurate. Now, uh, I don't remember exactly right, but I do believe that both of these are really neck and neck for as far as counts and accuracy. Uh, the 210 is not true RMS, which doesn't bother me at all for this. 
Uh, it doesn't have the auto V and low impedance, which I, I kind of like the auto V, but I really rarely use it. Uh, it also doesn't have a VFD mode. It does have temperature. It has frequency, but it's up here. It has manual ranging, relative mode, hold, um, backlight. It does not have the backlight for the continuity mode, which is kind of a bummer, but not a deal breaker for me. Um, let's try AC. So we should be seeing 110 volts AC there, and we're not. We're seeing crazy stuff. Let's check on the Ryman and see. It's kind of confusing having identical leads. Maybe that's my problem. Yeah, it is my problem. I think. Let's see. I think we've got it right now. There we go. 121.2.1. All right, so let's try the Bryman. 121.2. Check it out, guys. I found another problem. At least I think it's a problem. I N E R. Isn't that weird? So, let me go grab the instructions to this real quick and see if it tells me what that problem is. Okay, so I'm getting an error. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily call it an error, I would call it an issue, I guess. That whenever I put the 400 milliamp fuse into place and close that circuit, I'm getting the beep jack warning. That's pretty much telling me that, <coughs> excuse me, that's pretty much telling me that I have a, oh, I think that might be the problem. It thinks that there is a probe plugged into the voltage jack. Okay, so if you look at this jack here, you can see that it's actually two different solder pads. And if you look on the inside of it, you can actually see that rather than being, you can't see it on the screen, but I can, but there's actually two metal half sleeves in here, and they're electrically isolated from each other all the way up to this point here and all the way through. So I may have messed up by shorting these together. I may actually have to take this wire out and straighten it and wick some of this solder away and make sure that I try to keep those separate. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. Actually, that seems really weird because this is the common. So let's think about that some more. If I'm only getting the problem on the milliamp jack, let me put, I'm going to have to desolder this and flip it over and look on the bottom side and see what's going on. This is a pretty simple desolder. I just take the tip of my iron and put it on the wire on the outside of it. And these are actually slots. And when I see the solder start to melt, I just give it a little shove until the wire clears everything. And then there's one screw to remove and we should very, very gently get it. There we go, right on out. Be careful because there are some header connectors and we don't want to bend those pins. Okay, so I'm going to probe each side of the input jacks. Let me get you all a little bit closer in here. This is that milliamp jack here. I'm going to probe each side of it and see if I have some continuity. And I do. Alright, so we can see that we've got a pretty hard short between these two pads. And I think the first thing I'm going to do to try to troubleshoot that is to actually desolder this entire pad and then recheck it and see. And if there's actually a short, if there's a short inside of this jack, then what I 
might be able to get away with is actually taking the volts jack and swapping it out because the volts jack doesn't have the beep alert so we might be able to kind of cheat and have an easy fix here but we'll get it desoldered and check it out all right so the short is going with the jack pulled um, and I noticed whenever I pulled the jack that in between two of the prongs there was a little solder bridge that could have happened whenever I was desoldering I don't think it did because whenever I removed the solder bridge the short on the jacks itself was also gone so I think we'll try to put it back together just like it is I'll whip these pads really well and put some brand new solder on it to where we're pretty much starting from scratch and that might be the fix for this Okay, so if I put, if I skip putting the board in, it doesn't seem like we have a problem. Oh, but wait a minute, in continuity we get a steady beat. Isn't that weird? Let's go to resistance, mega ohms. So direct short. Wow. So where could that short be at? I wonder. Okay, so I went ahead and resoldered the wires onto the rear board from the front board, and I'm just holding the meter together right now. And it looks like we may have actually fixed the issue. Whatever it is, was it may have just been a little ghost in there that we managed to work out somehow. But we'll get it put back together for real and see if it's a permanent fix or not. It doesn't look like the beep jack is working for the straight amps, but there is no fuse in there right now. So let's grab a fuse and see if that works. That looks good all right so we're all put back together I'm gonna call this a successful repair um, I went ahead and took the fuses out of the other Bryman and stuck in here and I'll just reorder some fuses to put in the in the actual Bryman um, this one I'm gonna cut a little screen saver screen protector for it put it on and put it in my bag and I think this will make a really good little everyday meter so thanks for watching guys and I'll see y'all later